guys kev here and i wanted to do a blade show sort of recap or whatever show you what i got uh i didn't really pick up much um i had a couple things sent home with me for review um i did buy two things uh one of which is not here because it's a t-shirt and it's in the laundry uh, but you guys will see it i'm sure on a live stream but it was a gecko customs t-shirt uh, I'm a big t-shirt guy. I love knife-related t-shirts. Honestly, I like knife-related t-shirts maybe more than I like a lot of knives. Uh, it's like all I wear for t-shirts right now. I'm wearing a triple stripe knife shirt. Uh, I got it at the last Blade Show. But anyway, now let's get into it. The one thing I did actually buy uh, was a new Riot EXO. And if you guys remember, I was really big on the EXO uh m so that's sort of the medium version i guess m for medium i don't know if they did that on purpose um but it's the one that came out with a lock and a clip and that made a big deal right or a big difference sorry i did not like the full size um it really didn't make sense to me you know you couldn't carry it unless you put it in that sheath thing and had it on your belt or something um so adding the clip and the lock made a lot of sense to me when they did that so i gave it a shot and i loved it um, big shout out to Blade Ops for sending that to me initially, and I bought it right away. Then I bought another one. Then I bought another one. Then I bought a Zerkutai one. I sold a few. You know how it goes. I ended up actually not having any because I just wasn't carrying it. But uh, I noticed they came out with a mini a while ago, and I wanted to pick one up. So I hit up my boy Andy over at Crane's Cutlery, and he was going to send me one. And, you know, time went by, and we ended up talking, and he said, hey, come by at Blade Show and um you can see what we have and uh so that's what i did and i ended up just picking up this mini and funny story uh when i first saw this mini on cranes cutlery's instagram uh it comes with just the uh usual has uh the cloth in here i believe and i think there might be extra something sometimes they include extra hardware uh maybe not on these oh spoke too soon yeah there's a couple extra screws there and a uh, gel packet that's so why i didn't want to take it all out of here but i did and now i am screwed but um yeah when he first posted this i actually was like hey dude i think you screwed up you said my carta but that's clearly um camo carbon or fat carbon or something just the way they did the pictures, it looked like that. Well, this is actually a burl micarta, they call it. Um, burl linen camo. Very cool. Now, I do wish it was something other than 3V, like LMAX, like some of the other ones. Um, just because I rust stuff, but we'll see how that goes. This is the drop point. Apparently, there is a new sheep's foot blade, perhaps, um, out there. I don't know if it's on the mini, but um, you can see it has the clip. And then it has the uh, same lock and everything. And I got to say, for being this small, um, it's not tiny or anything, but for being this small, it does not feel any different. Like, the action doesn't feel any different. You know, I can still uh, maneuver it pretty much the same way. It's kind of hard off camera or on camera. Also, I suck at that. Um, I like to do the move where I just go like this. And then I do this. And then I do that. And then I do this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I freaking love this thing. And mini just makes it better for me. I like smaller knives. Um, let's see. We are just under four inches on the handle. So overall, we're probably looking at three inches right on the uh, blade. Not even. Um, two and what were we looking at here? Why can't I do it? Um, two, I don't know. 2.6 inches maybe on the blade. And then overall six and a half, six point, I don't know, four, 6.3, 6.4 overall. So not very large, but just a really fun knife. And I like it in this form factor better. Um, it still has the rattles and but when you bear it down it's pretty good i mean 
It's never going to be, you know, solid as a tank, but it doesn't need to be, honestly. Um, I've carried one of these and used them many a times and have never felt like it wasn't going to work or anything. Now, I always go for the drop point because I, I like the Tanto, but it's just such a thick-ass grind that it's just useless to me. So, um, I always go with the drop point. It just seems to be better off for me. Uh, like I said, I wish they had Elmex and I wish they had some camo carbon or something, but I could always get some scales made maybe. Um, but there you go. That is the mini XO. And then, um, let's see. And then they were like, Hey, well, why don't you take one of these to review? So this isn't mine. I'll send this back, but they let me pick out a full size XO. So this is not the medium. This is the full size, and now they are offering this with a reversible clip and a reversible lock. So us lefties out there can get full function out of this guy, and that's pretty cool. So now you have the full size XO. I went with drop point again on this one. Um, and this is a satin in LMAX. See, why don't they do the mini in LMAX? So this is exactly what I would want this to be. I'd want it to be a satin and I'd want it to be Elmax and not be um, 3V Stonewash. But since it is 3V, I guess the Stonewash does make more sense. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna do a video uh, showing how you swap the uh, lock over and how you swap the clip over. So that there'll be a video probably about these two knives. I don't have a medium one right here to show you, um, but I can give you the size. The blade length on this guy is three and three quarters, and the handle is right at five inches. So overall, you're looking at eight and three quarters. And um, it does feel good. It does feel good. It's somehow, uh, maybe just because I'm used to the XO now, it does feel a little better than I remember the full size being. Um, but it is a little longer than I prefer, right? That's the one thing I didn't love about the full size was it's so much blade coming out of there. It's just a, a longer process to fidget with. Uh, and I would prefer the medium or mini size. Um, so if they do the mini in Fat Carbon and LMAX at some point, I'll pick that up for sure and then sell this one. But I do like the way this burl micarta looks. I'm normally not a micarta guy really anymore. Um, I do like the way this looks. This is orange micarta. Uh, in person, it really looks red. They also had a teal, and then they had some standard ones as well, um, like burlap and green canvas. But um, So stay tuned for a video on these two, uh, showing more detail. And uh, specifically on this guy, I'll show the swap and everything. I'm trying to find some space here to put all these knives. So let's see. Bear with me a second. I'm going to move my knives down so I can make room for some stuff we got here. All right. So then uh, Giant Mouse. Oops. Giant Mouse was kind enough to uh, let me check out their newest offering. And they have their own clips now, too. So, show you that in a second here. This is the Giant Mouse Yacht. And uh, I'm German, so I know that that J is silent, Yacht. And that means hunted in German. So, I assume in uh, Danish it's probably the same. So, uh, chased or hunted. And um, this is a pretty cool model, in my opinion. It's got a little nest muck to it. Um, it's got really good ergonomics in this back grip. And then unlike Vox, uh, or I guess mostly Vox, there's no choil here, but it is flat. So you do have a flat portion there, and then you have your jimping up here. I did uh, ask the folks over at Giant Mouse what they call this jimping, because I always call it Vox jimping. Even on um, my own knives with Devo, when we add that, we call it Vox style jimping as a um, nod to the person who really came up with that. 
But they said they just call it jimping. I found that pretty interesting. <laughs> so uh, we have some jimping up there on the blade. Uh, we have a nice reverse flick. Detent is solid on this example here. Lock bar access is pretty good. I mean, they did give you some space there. And I think it's pretty good. You have a flipper tab, so it's not going to, you know, just guillotine down. You're going to get tapped with that flipper tab, which is probably protecting you anyway. Dead nut centered on this guy here. Can't get to the tip or anything. Uh, brass, bronze, backspacer, satin finish, magna cut. Probably around 61, 62. It is Italy. My guess on this one, I'll have to take it apart at some point to figure out who um, the OEM is. They do sometimes list it on the inside of the scale. Um, it'll say like LSK for lion steel or whatever. Um, so I think somebody told me these are on multi-row. So I'll probably do a disassembly video on this guy just to show it and maybe put some skips in here. Uh, if it is the same multi-row I'm thinking of, it's probably what was in the Rio in which case I put in skips and it felt pretty good, but it feels really good right now. Um, this is actually black micarta. It's almost got a similar look to that um, EXO. A little bit. Um, this is really nicely milled. I really like how it looks. They have an orange one, which makes sense for the theme, Yacht. Um, and then they had a green canvas micarta one as well. Um, I really like this model. It flicks really well. Um, and they have some really cool stuff coming, so stay tuned. And uh, they also have a sweet camp knife that I saw for the first time. And I was really impressed with that. So uh, Giant Mouse did a great job here. This one is uh three and a quarter inches blade uh four and four point seven on the handle and just about eight inches maybe yeah just about eight inches overall very cool knife and then they have their own clip now that fits the wire clip slot uh, which is cool because a lot of people love the lynch clips like this. And I got to say, I really don't like it all that much. Um, I know that's probably blasphemy to a lot of people. And I used to be a bigger fan of it. I just am not, really. Um, so let's see what it looks like. If I take that out. Tighten this back down. Take this out. And see if we can just slot this puppy in there. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to take it all the way out. Well, maybe. Let's see. They did tell me that um, there's one model, I believe it's the Atelier, and that one does not uh, work with this. I think they might have said they have a clip specifically for that model, but I'm not positive. But there you go. That is the giant mouse replaceable clip for the wire clip, and I think this is a schnazzy looking clip. I really like the design. Um, I like that it's different. It's not like the Lynch clips. Um, and I think it just matches their knives really well. So I got to give them props for coming up with a sweet solution to that for those people who want um, to not have the wire clip. Because I know how that is. People want to use their uh, milled clips. And uh, yeah, so that's how that looks. I'll drop this in the box and I'll probably end up sending this guy around, pass around like I usually do. So I'll put that in there for anybody who wants to test it with the OG clip. But uh, I'm going to carry this and I will do a review, maybe a disassembly as well. And uh, yeah, but I'm really happy with it. The action's good. Um, it feels great in the hand. And um, I think that they're really stepping it up. I got to say. 
Over the last probably six months to a year, Giant Mouse has really impressed me with um, their changes, you know, or it just seems like their changes, like they're listening to the community, and that's a really uh, big thing. So that's the Giant Mouse Yacht. Then um, Concept sent me along with some stuff, but first, let me show you this cool pry bar. So this came from Tomorrow Tool. Here is the card. Designs from today, tools for tomorrow. And this is the Butter Bar Pocket with salt and pepper EDC slip and bead. Uh, finish is tomorrow raw tie, and it was uh, completed in September 23. And there's your logo, Tomorrow Tool. Definitely check them out on Instagram. Give them a follow. I got to uh, meet the owner of tomorrow tool and he kindly uh, gave me this he's like hey man take one of these to review check it out and i was like shit sure man uh the slip is absolutely sexy look at it. salt and pepper beautiful stitching beautiful coloring and then you just slide your butter bar in there and you carry your butter bar like so and now you have a clip too Works really well. I was impressed with this slip. Now here is the butter bar. You also have a little bead on here, lanyard. And he calls it the butter bar, he says, because it looks like a butter knife. Okay? And it's essentially a little pry bar. So uh, one thing you guys have probably heard me complain about a lot on this channel is pry bars with the stupid bottle opener on them. And um, yeah, yeah. Well, Tomorrow Tool was saying that's one of the reasons he came up with this design because he just thought they sacrificed ergonomics and everything for that uh, bottle opener, right? And I always tell people, I open a bottle like this. Like, I don't need... It's a pry bar. It's literally meant to pry things. And what do you do with a bottle cap? You pry it open. So I don't need another little thing here to screw up my ergonomics. This feels fantastic in the hand. Now, I have to carry this and use it to get a good feel for it. He did tell me uh, these were OEM'd for him. So they're not made in-house. Um, they are not made in China. Uh, they are made overseas, but not China. I think he might have said the Ukraine. Um, and they're made out of grade 9 titanium grade nine he said it was a, a little bit more malleable than grade five which is six four alv or whatever that we use on knife scales a lot um but uh in testing he hadn't had any issues or anything and he just thought it was cool when they had that option so he went with it i love how it has some jimping here and here and it really is uh very comfortable in the hand so uh, we're going to see how, you know, useful it is. I'll try to carry it here and, and just see how much I use it, right, for scraping and uh, prying some stuff. It doesn't look like you could really use it as, like, a nail puller or anything, but, um, yeah, we'll just give it a, a carry and, and see how it goes. It, it kind of has a little bit of a sway back look to me, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So that is the uh, butter bar. Let me just, I like putting it in a certain way. That's what she said. There we go. I think it looks like very cool design. That's Tomorrow Tool. And then I got a slip, too, from somebody. Um, where, oh, where are you? Uh-oh. There it is. And then I'll get into a couple of concepts, but I want to show these. So this is uh, tailored by Cortez, handmade in the U.S., tailored by cortez so there's the information definitely check him out on instagram check out his website but he makes these little handmade slips and i was impressed i really like the feel of this look at that i don't know i just think it looks slick he does custom work as well this is kind of meant he said it was made after the tactile bear um, so I haven't found anything that would fit it. I was thinking maybe the vanish would slip in there, get it slip in. Um, but it seems like everything I try to put in there is just a little too big for it. Um, also what she said, because it's meant for something super thin. 
And um, I do have a knife on the way that I'm excited to get, and I hope it fits in here. And that is um, the Serge Panchenko slip joint. He has some on his website right now if you guys are interested. It's in blue titanium and M390, and it's like $140. I've been told by uh, my buddy Zach Stuff that it's a very good slip joint in titanium. He had a G10 one we were playing with in his hotel room the other night. And um, he's like, yeah, he has titanium ones and the spring's stronger on those. And then we went to the site and they had the blue ones. Bang. All four of us. It was me, Zach Stuff, uh, Colin, and then uh, Justin from OCD for EDC. All four of us ordered it in within a minute <laughs> so serge is like oh I, I was wondering what the hell was going on there um so maybe that'll fit in here it does have a clip though so i don't know i'm trying to find something that'll fit in this sucker uh, but either way i want to have him make me a slip for my nip slip because um uh, i don't have a slip for this guy right now and i couldn't quite fit this in there either it's just too fat um this way it's a very thin knife, but the bear is so thin. Um, so, I don't know. I think this would be good for something, you know, like this is a, a utility knife. Like it might fit something like that relatively well. But see, that's too wide. Yeah, I just can't find anything to, to fit this guy, unfortunately. Um, so, we'll see if the... Uh, if the uh, Surge one will fit, it might be a little long. But anyway, he gave this to me just to check out, and, and I appreciate it. It's very cool. I mean, the quality here is phenomenal, and that's, uh, that's very uh, reassuring. And so I think I'm going to try to get one made by him. So there you go. Tailored by Cortez. Check him out on Instagram. And then um, Concept came over. Uh, my friend Joyce at Concept, we talk to her with OEM stuff, and uh, occasionally they, they like to send me some stuff to check out, and they sent me a couple of really cool knives. Now, they didn't send them, they handed them to me. Um, they're both flipper-only designs, believe it or not. Uh, this one here is, I believe, a design uh, by JK Knives. There it is. JK Knives, this is the uh, Production Integra. So hopefully you can see that all there. Uh, S35EN steel. And this has the Chinese Fat Carbon. Um, very original name. Chinese Fat Carbon. This is obviously supposed to look like toxic uh, fat carbon. So it's like got the green and the yellow. Um, and it's swirly. And it's cool. I like this stuff. Um... I do think it's a little, I like that it's more matte. Uh, fat carbon tends to be, or camo carbon, throwing myself under the bus here a little bit. But it does tend to be a little bit shiny. You see how shiny that is? I like that in a lot of instances. Um, I think it looks fa fabulous on these knives right here. Uh, but sometimes I don't want it to be so shiny, you know? And uh, this is definitely more matte. The downside to that is it kind of does make it feel a little bit more like G10. Um, but I think it's a really cool material. And um, yeah, so toxic or whatever you want to call this, colored fat carbon from China. Uh, Stonewash blade. And look at that action. Really good detent on this. It is a liner lock. Let me make sure of that. Yep, full liner in there. Really smooth action. Just pops out of there. Definitely uh, a little larger than I prefer. So this guy is uh, 3.6, yeah, 3.6 on the blade, uh, 4.7 or so on the handle. So overall, you're looking at 8.5, uh, sorry, 8.4, 8.4 overall. And uh, yeah, I like it. Gold accents. Pops out of there really well. You'll see a video on this. I'm digging it. Nice milled clip. It's interesting. It, they have the cutout down here to disengage. Um, but left-handed, I tend to want to just like come up to the top of that push right here. Um, just got to learn to do it a little lower. But that one's cool. And then this one really uh, I liked quite a bit. Um, so let's take a look at this one. 
This, I believe, is a Dirk Pinkerton design. So Concept works with Dirk uh, on some stuff. I believe he's designed the Main Street, the Little Main Street. And this one I really like. So Dead Nut centered, nice lightweight construction, blue titanium, you got those standoffs, beautiful milled clip. And then you have this flipper tab. I do wish I had jimping, but it pops out of there. You have a nice drop point blade on here. And again, you have S35EN, and this is the Anomaly from Dirk Pinkerton, and um, yeah, I just really like this design. It's just a very uh, simple knife, but you can kind of see that quayback look in it. See that, whoop. Um, very, very cool. It's very smooth, great detent, just fires out of there. I mean, it's just one of those simple designs that hits the spot for me. Um, I'll link concept down below. I'll link anything here I can, um, which is everything I can link. Um, but yeah, I just really like this. I don't know if it's available or anything yet. Um, like I said, they just handed it to me at the show, so I didn't really, um, get to look into it. So this might be an existing model. It might be a new model. I think this one's been around because I saw Jim Skelton do a video on it, I think. Um, but this one I haven't seen. Man, I just really... I just really like this knife. Um, it's just like uh, somebody at the show handed me the uh, Wee Knives Miscreant. It was Seth Price. Shout out to World Tree. Um, and it's such a good knife. It's just a little square, rectangular sort of flipper knife. But, you know, when it's well executed, man, just feels fantastic in the hand. And... Um, yeah, just sort of the epitome of what the knife world um, fell in love with, you know, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think on this one. I really like it. This is the anom anomaly, and it is not an anomaly. <laughs> you know? It's a very uh, uh, standard design, but I love it. I love it. Um, so that's the concept, uh, Integra and Anomaly, the Butter Bar from Tomorrow Tool. We have the uh, Giant Mouse Yacht. And then we have the two Exos, the full size and the mini. And then we had our uh, Tailored by Cortez slip. So that's pretty much everything I picked up, I think, at Blade Show. Um, like I said, I picked up that T-shirt as well. And I ordered that um, Surge slip joint, but um, I don't have it yet. And uh, that's really it, guys. The only thing I actually bought was this, um, or was gonna buy. They they just told me we can settle it later, but um, I was ready to hand my cash over for this, and I will uh, when they ask for it. Uh, but that was it. I mean, I really wasn't on the prowl looking for a bunch of knives. Um, you know, these guys were kind enough to send me home with some stuff, and that's awesome. I always appreciate that. Um, but yeah, there just wasn't a lot at the show that got me all excited. I think I'm in a little bit of a funk here, but hopefully, you know, we get uh, kickstarted out of that soon. Um, a lot of people were excited about the tactile knife, the archer. I did get to handle it. It's okay. It wasn't my style at all. I think it's like $600 for the base model. Um, yeah, just not for me, but I get it. Totally get it. Um, there was, what else? What else were people really excited about? Oh, shout out to Mr. Mr. Designs. He won Best Factory EDC with his Cypher design. Um, him and Knife Standards were there. Shout out to Knife Standards. Uh, finally got to meet ATR in person and his lovely wife. And, um, Mihai from Mr. Mr. and his dad. Just amazing people at the show, of course. Um, I didn't go over that earlier, but... Just everybody I met, it's it's always an amazing experience. Um, but yeah, big shout out to Mihai. Him and uh, Knife Standards, ATR came by and they were like, hey, we're going to go enter our knives. And Colin and I never do that. Uh, you have to like go enter your knife into the categories or whatever. Um, and we just never do it. I'm just 
I just don't think about it. It's like 3 p.m. on the first day. It's like, well, I want to sell knives. And, and it seems like the people who are sponsoring the show always win. <laughs> um, you know, we had like the Malibu one five years after it was first launched. Um, but, um, yeah, they went and entered. And shout out to Mihai for winning. Um, I really thought he would win with the zero, the button lock, because it's so innovative. But um, turns out they love the, the Cypher, and uh, I think it's a fantastic knife. I have a video on that knife, so check it out. I have tons of videos on Mr. Mr. and Knife Standards. Uh, amazing people in the community. Support them if you can. There was tons of people like that at the show. Um, I also got to meet a ton of you guys, and I really appreciate anybody who came up and said hello. Anybody who picked up a nip or a growler or anything from the table or just said hi, uh, we truly appreciate it. And um, that's what I'm here for, you know. Um, buying the knives, um, you know, I think I got to a point where I just realized I didn't have to buy everything. Um, you know, I used to just buy everything. And um, if I reviewed something and I thought it was good, I felt kind of obligated to buy it even though I wouldn't really keep it. It's a great knife, whatever I'm talking about. But I just have so many other knives or I'm working on my own projects or I just, you know, it's just how it is. Uh, maybe right now I'm, I'm really into a slip joint hole. So it's like just not carrying a bunch of folders. But um, so I kind of learned that I don't have to buy them all. I can say they're great and not buy them. You know, that's a luxury I have because people send me stuff to check out. You know, whether it's a loaner or a sample, I get to then pass on to other channels or give away or whatever. So uh, anyway, I'm rambling here, but the show is great. I love you guys. And um, if you want to check any of this stuff out, I'll link what I can down below. So I love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.